there's me staring at a blank screen. Hello friends, hopefully that's us live now. Uh, happy Sunday, welcome to another Sunday chat. And today we'll be looking, catching up on another Facebook page of one of our one of our friends. Me, come up. And me is jumping into the stream. So as always, if you can just let me know if the audio and everything is working fine and let me know how your week's done, been, how crafty or otherwise you've been. Um, I've actually had a great week. I'm catching up on my needle felting orders finally. Just got a few little bodies sitting waiting. Um, just got these three guys to finish off and that's me caught up so I can really start working on pushing, getting some more sales. Um, what else did I do? I've got a load of videos out and managed to launch my second channel properly, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and oddly enough, Scotland is still roasting hot. So if I'm looking a little bit less with energy, in fact, I think me is demonstrating just how draining this weather's been. We're, we're all absolutely wiped. So I'll try and keep my energy up for the stream, but like like last week, I might fade a little bit quicker than usual. <clears throat> um, had some great fun times catching up with friends I've not seen for ages, made tons of videos, everything's been an awesome week for me. Uh, Rosani's here, um, audio and video are fine at this end. Thank you so much for letting me know. I hope everything's good with you. Right, while we're waiting for people to to catch up that hopefully this is this is all up and running what I'll do like usual I'll just have a wee nosy through my Facebook <laughs> pictures so you can see what I've been up to so let's pop the screen on share my screen so just examples of how wonderfully hot it's been but my boy Ben um yeah he's never been much for swimming so the fact that he not only goes into the water but he's going in and lying down just shows how ridiculously hot it is it was actually in my car it was shown 32 degrees where it parked this is scotland i know that was utterly bonkers um so yeah so hot um, and I went around Loch Lomond with a, with a friend friend of mine on Wednesday. We went to Loch Lomond. Such a beautiful day, such a beautiful place. I think the dogs had an absolute blast. Anywhere that they can get in, swimming in the sea, running in the woods, is a good day for them. And a good day for me too. We had a lovely long drive testing out the new car, which looks like it's going to have a really great fuel economy. Uh, yeah, but... Bit of Loch Lomond with the two dogs having a paddle. Um, oh, you can't really see it too great in that picture. I don't know to like upload the pictures how good they are. But the reason I took that, just the other side of the loch, we were seeing the seaplane was coming into land. It's really cool to see that coming into land on the loch. I think it does some slight commercial flights to the islands and stuff. But this one was doing, um, it was like tourist flights. You could buy a ride on the seaplane, which I think would be awesome fun. And a bit scary. I've not done many. I've not flown much at all, and I've certainly never flown. Well, I think that's me done with us. I've never flown in such a tiny plane. I think that would be a little bit scary, but cool too. Uh, what? A, yeah, more of the dogs posing. Um, yeah, <laughs> nothing to say there. And this is from Loch Lomond Shores. This is actually the view outside a shopping centre in Scotland we do <laughs> they're not all like this but I love this place it's a kind of upmarket shopping centre but it's still a shopping centre and you can see right up the loch um, that there you can just about see the distinctive shape that mountain's Ben Lomond that's what gives Loch Lomond its name you have the Ben means the mountain and the loch's the watery bit and Glen would be a valley but the valley's flooded there, see, teaching you Scottish again. And you can just see at the side there, that's the Waverley. It's the only, I believe it's the only ocean-going paddle steamer still in existence in in the world. And it cruises up and down Loch Lomond and stuff, and it's really awesome. Uh, Magdalena, hi there. Um, I'll say hello to Mia when, when she comes back. She's actually gone and crashed out touching the wall. So I think she's just needing to cool down a bit. It is so warm. 
Uh, yeah, so that's Loch Lomond. Beautiful location. If any of you are ever in Scotland, it's well worth a visit. You can, the touristy side, um, up the up the west side here is the touristy side with much better roads, but there's, there's things you can pop in. The east side I haven't done myself yet. I planned to do it last week, but that didn't come to fruition. And yeah, this is just further up. Where that picture was taken is just in in that little bit there. So this is further up the west side of the loch. Um, again, there's beautiful views every direction. It was such a cool day. I'm going to have to do that again. Um, yep, just a better picture of the kind of same image. And this is just looking up the loch a little bit more. Poor thing. Yep, I know Magdalena. I like the nice weather, but unfortunately the poor dogs are in are in fur coats, so they do suffer with it a bit more. It's actually my house is actually fairly cool most of the time because of the way the sun the sun hits it. My the the front of my house is north facing, so I actually have the lights on just now to get enough light light here. But in in general, it's fairly cool, so it's just it's just a really draining heat just now. Yeah, so that's. I think that's all of my photo album for just now. Oh yeah, that was just me um, playing in the river with my dog. So I was getting some B-roll for the second channel. Um, and quite possibly, yeah, you'll see in a second. Oh no, there's a dogs running to camera, like I say, just trying to get some B-roll. The dogs are being very, very good at playing up for the camera for me. It's cool. Um, so that's all good. But yeah, that's... That's what I've been doing with my days. It's been that hot that I'm in the water probably as much as the dogs. It's great fun though. Right. So, well, again, while we're still waiting. Oh, hiccups. I've been drinking, was it dandelion and burdock? To my face. To my face. Yes, I've been drinking dandelion and burdock. Um, as does doing cheap versions of it for like 50p. So this has been my, my drink just now. Very strange, unique taste, but totally love it. Right, yeah, so back to what we're going to be speaking about is this Facebook page, Beaded and Needle Felted Animals, which I'm really excited to have a look at. But we just want to, um, before we, we get on to that, while we're waiting for people to catch up, because I know announcements take for ages, and it's usually about halfway in before everyone gets to see what they're doing. So... I want to quickly pop in and just say that's my new channel launched. I've got a couple of videos up. There's a couple more to drop. They should be dropping every Saturday, I believe. So if any of you are interested, this is going to be a channel about conditioning exercises for fitness and mental stimulation for your dogs, but also lots of scenery around Scotland and me and the dogs playing in the scenery. Um, so if that's anything you're interested in, the channel's just launched and I was really excited. Um, I'm already up to 10 subscribers, which doesn't sound much, but the thing is, it takes a while to get momentum with a channel. So another reason I wanted to do this is to see, is to test myself of what I've learned. So, you know, what I'm learning building a YouTube channel, I'm taking and repurposing it into making my Etsy channel, my Etsy shop even better. And now that I've learned extra things from that, I'm hoping that I can do even better with another YouTube channel, if that makes sense. And as I'm out walking about every day with the dogs anyway, I thought this was a cool cool way to do a channel. And I'm also, I'm a dog trainer, so I, I should know about some of these things anyway. So it's more stuff that I've got that I can pass on some information about. Um, I also wanted to just show you this. Our lovely Danielle from Cutting, Cutting the Kombu... Whoa, lack of speaking after only 10 minutes. Our lovely Danielle from Cutting the Caboose has launched herself another channel. 
this is Creator Answers. So it's mainly for people who are running their YouTube channel. Is that, yeah, there we go. And this is just answers to the questions. What's the best camera? You know, what do all these important things mean? It's more tech based, but it's still useful if any of you are looking at buying cameras or anything like that. Really cool channel. And do you know when I was loading this up just to see when when she launched, I was commenting, I think she launched a nickname and stream last week, and I was commenting how amazing it was she'd got a hundred subscribers in the first day. She's just about got 1,000 subscribers in her first week. That is not fair. No, I'm just kidding. That's fantastic. And she's done a great job. Um, so, yeah, totally chuffed. Because I'm looking, I'm thinking on my new channel, I'll be happy if in maybe six months to a year I've got 1,000 subscribers. So, in a week, Danielle, you go, girl. That's pretty awesome. All right, but if you guys want to, if you're interested in tech, anything about cameras and stuff like that, then give her a look. Really, really cool, and she's a great person anyway. Right, so let's get on. Hopefully we've got a few people here, so let's get on to where we're supposed to be. Okay, I'm going to mess up the first name so badly. I've been avoid. Did you notice I was avoiding saying it? I said beaded and needle felted animals. I didn't... Pearl, no, 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 I can't do it. Sorry, I'm really sorry. I'm I'm not gonna make a total, a total mess up of saying these things. Um, but yeah, uh, I will. There's a link in the in the description if you guys want to check this out at any point. But let's have a look. I'm super excited for the beaded animals. I think this is a such a cool thing. I've never tried it myself. It sounds so much fun. So let's have a scan through some of these pictures <laughs> so it's not just beaded animals this looks like well she's saying engraved it looks like pyrography I think that's the right word I'm doing so well today with the speaking but a uh, kind of wood burning um, kind of wood burning um, you get a uh, well you get gadgets now I've had one before where you plug it into the wall and it's like a kind of like a soldering iron the pointed end of it and it just heats up really hot and as you drag it over wood it burns the area of the wood and you know changes it so you can draw designs in it and it's so much fun to do I, I do kind of like burning things so it's really cool uh, Magdalena yeah it'd be good to have you over at the dog training if that's if that's something you're interested in I would love to see you there thank you so much always supportive um yeah I love this smiley cat um I think I was I was a kid I was a girl guide when we tried the pyromania pipe drawing with fire drawing with fire that's that's awesome um and I think we did it you get sort of like pokery things you put them in the fire and then very carefully bring them out and draw with them that's the old school way of doing it but that's really cool um I think this is just a different angle of a piece that's to come later. But I do love all these pin cushions and cups and things. Needle felting is actually really great to um, do a pin cushion type things in. Because of the nature of the wool, it's actually supposed to be really good for your needles. So if you're going to get some kind of a pin cushion to to keep if you do embroidery or anything like that, which I don't. But if you do anything that you need to keep actual normal needles, it the wool supposedly keeps them really sharp. I know nothing about that, but yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a circus. Of course it is. That's cool. It's so much fun. There's little balloons and there's, I assume that's some kind of thread and trees and the entrance to the circus. <laughs> cool. That's totally different. <laughs> I do remember seeing this before. Yeah, my memory is shocking. Yes, because she'd found this Life is a Circus cup thing, so decided to make it a circus. That's cool. Yes, I, I do remember seeing this. Um, on a blue, she's, she shared a lot in the Pam Duffy's Felting Friends Facebook group and in other felting groups. I loved when I saw this this is the first time now. Americans might not even know what this is. Um, it might not be, but it probably is. Um, 
we get Kinder Eggs in the UK and Europe and Canada and everywhere that's not America, which is like a chocolate egg, and then inside the egg is like this kind of yellow container thing that you can pop open and it keeps keep stuff in. Ah, Danzin, hi there, how you doing? Um, so for some reason these things are banned in America but they're everywhere else. It's, I think there's Kinder chocolate like the Bueno and stuff like that, it's delicious stuff. But in the Kinder egg the chocolate's fairly cheap and nasty but it was a treat as kids you like it. Um, it's got like a kind of shell of white chocolate inside and then dark chocolate around the outside. And it's kind of okay, but it's not the best chocolate in the world. But the idea was you've got this toy in the middle. And in America, for some reason, you're not allowed to have toys in food, which as a rule kind of makes sense. But this is a chocolate egg with this little plastic egg that's, I mean, it's pretty big. Nobody is going to swallow this. Mainly you just hurt your teeth because you had to kind of, it's really kind of hard to get into. So the, the most exciting thing about the Kinder Eggs was the fact that you were going to get absolutely rubbish toys inside, but they're little kind of plastic, think tiny things that you had to sort of assemble yourself that might make a little car or it might make a penguin or something. Um, but what she's done um, around around this Kinder Egg thing, she's made a minion body. So I oh, think that's really pretty cool. You can like open it up like that and hide things in it. And when it's all shut up, you wouldn't know that it's a secret hidey stash, stash place. Uh, yeah, so there he is with his, with his head back on. Looks awesome, you wouldn't know. And the Kinder Egg shape thing is just perfect to do that. There he is, <laughs> so cute. And yeah, and yes, this is totally why I made the frog thing last week. Thursday, that is last week, yeah, it's a Sunday now. It's totally why I made the fl the frog in my sculptures, my videos on Thursday, was because everyone was making frogs. So um, I had to have a go at making frogs, and here's her frog. I love the fact that he can balance, he's like so well balanced, he can sit there and hold up a pencil. I'll have to see if my frog can hold stuff. Um, and because Magdalena suggested it, I did throw up my frog for sale on eBay, so he's going to be finding a new home. I'm really terrible at thinking of selling my sculptures that I make for videos. I always feel like, I don't know, they're... I just feel that it's not that they're not as good. I probably spend twice as much time on them, but I just feel because I was making them for a video, it sort of devalues them somehow, which is probably the opposite thing. But yeah, Magdalena, I think her felts are so cute. You can tell it's all her style and it's really imaginative stuff. More juice. Um, yeah, he is so cute. The frog legs are really quite difficult to make because they don't fit together the way you think they do, which is why making the armature by using the skeleton, well, skeleton diagrams really makes it easier. But I think he's he's like dead cute. I love the little tickle spots up his belly. Um, more sides of Mr. Froggy. Okay, that looks like some kind of vampire hair, which is awesome. Um, what's it? Oh, Quidditch cup in Brunswick. <laughs> I, she made the cup for the Quidditch game. That's cool. Uh, vampire werewolf hair, but that's really cool. So it's all got like the moss and stuff around it, and then, and then the hair, which is cute in himself. And I'm always gonna love the addition of like werewolf teeth or something, and. Quidditch rings, Harry Potter kind of thing. Um, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Dan, dead cute. Yeah, I suppose when you think about it, <laughs> they shouldn't, those words shouldn't go together. Is that not something that Americans say? I don't know. Is that just a UK thing? But yeah, dead cute does sound weird when you think about it. But so many things do. So many of our sayings are absolutely pointless. And you can't tell me that Americans don't like have plenty of pointless sayings as well. There seems to what brings to what's sticking in my head just now is the fact that everyone just now seems to be saying winner winner chicken dinner, which just seems an 
unnecessary amount of extra words just to make something rhyme. I don't know if there's some history behind it, but it just seems like, why do you have to say extra words? Just go like, winner, or, you know, I won. <laughs> Here's a sheep. It looks like she's got eyelashes the way the, the felt is going on. That's really cool. And yeah, I, I've done it myself a few times. It's kind of cool if you don't want to make curls or a, a different alternative to making curls is you can make tons of tiny little balls and felt them on as if the fleece. It's really time consuming, but it's actually, it's kind of really relaxing as well. You just stick a movie on and just felt up a total pile of balls and then stab them on the sheep. It seems... Oh yeah, there is a little heart there. I wondered where that had appeared from in that picture. Ah, I think, yes, that was... My memory is shocking. I think that was like a, a love you or something, but you being the, the sheep thing. Puns are more difficult when you can't write them down. I'm hoping there's another side to that. I can't quite figure out what that is. Let's let's scroll on. Yay! There we go. Ah, that looks like a, a blue hedgehog, I think. What's everyone else think that is? But it looks like a blue hedgehog with giant toes. Yeah, I really want to do... I did the pom-pom hedgehog, oh, almost a year ago now. But I just did him normally. I want to do him like where he's nearly all curled up with just his toes sticking out. Which I think is kind of what this is. Um, it's cute and with the the different colours of blue the the pom pom like I really enjoyed using the mohair f the mohair fabric to make the hedgehog it looked cool but I really I think I enjoyed better using the pom pom where you just get three or four different colours of whatever you're going to want the spines to be like different browns and greys make a pom pom and then you know do the front as his face and that fuzziness just makes the, the spines really quite cool. <laughs> Magdalena, I know, exactly. Dan has to start felting. <laughs> Absolutely. Eats frog's legs, not felt them. I've never tried frog's legs. I'm, I've seen, they were at a thing when I was a kid years ago, but I chickened out of eating them. Oh, that is so cool. Uh, the Curious Bird. <laughs> I love that. And like you say, Magdalene, she really has her own style. I love I love the wire glasses and everything as well. Um, but he really looks like he's quite able to stand up by himself and everything as well. That's great use of the armature. Oh, and that, yeah, that's a wee magnifying glass so he can... That's Curious Bird. Is that like some kind of cartoon thing or something that I'm missing? But very cool. So he can like have a nosy in at it. Very cool. <laughs> more pom-pom hedgehogs. Yeah, I totally, I think that's the way to go. I'm going to make some more pom-pom hedgehogs because I loved, I love doing them. <laughs> Frog legs taste like chicken. Well then, why don't I just eat chicken? I'm rather, I'm a little squeamish in certain things, but I, I have to admit they did just, I remember when I looked at them and I thought that just looks like chicken wings. Um, so yeah, I'm totally, I suppose I'm not against the idea of it. It's just not common. They they don't, nowhere around here sells them to my knowledge. Well, somewhere will. Far, Farzin, far, Farzin, hi there. Um, good to see you. Oh, look at the multicolored spines. That's so cute. Magdalena, have you tried any of the pom pom animals yet? They are so much fun. Um, there's there's a woman, Japan, I believe, that makes the pom pom like the dogs and things, and her work is so amazing. That's why I got into it a wee bit myself. But everybody's at it now, and I think they're great. That's a pom pom pig hedgehog. <laughs> oh, that is fab. I love that. That does look like with all the furs. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Um, she's very much. It's a pom pom at the back, and then 
like fleece felted it's not the pom-pom felted on the front so that's a cool idea for like something different as well because I won't lie actually felting together the bits of the pom-pom that you're trying to create into the shape of the animal it's, it seems to take quite a long time to get them to felt but I have a theory that that's probably because I'm using really cheap acrylic the woman that I was following she used like really fancy like cotton and stuff so maybe if I spent spent a bit more money on it but I was just wanting to have a go at making them I'm not going to be making them to sell or anything <laughs> like Delina I've already done a pom-pom hedgehog right I'll see if I can find it that's my physic um all right let me look for it sorry you can watch me typing again and screen again right um here's here's the wee one i made i'll put up a link to it see i didn't realize you guys hadn't seen this one yet it was quite a while ago when did i post it oh last summer <laughs> oh my delina saved it too uh, <laughs> that's good i did i did wonder um because this one's been like actually most of my most of my pom-pom animals have done really quite well over time um, but yeah I'll have to I'll have to get get back to making some more of them so any ideas for pom-pom animals that I can make I might do another pom-pom tutorial when I say tutorial right this sounds like I've had a plan and I've made a pattern but literally some of them I made it first and then I just did the exact same thing again and filmed it but most of them I just film it as I'm going and literally you guys I'm more surprised than you guys when I cut it open and it's worked so just let me know um challenge me let's see let's see what other pom-pom animals I can make but anyway yes pom-pom pig pig hedgehog that's great fun and I think that's I think that's a traditional hedgehog and the back's cool, yeah, it's striped. Oh, so am I? No, that's a different one. He is cute. Uh, Magdalena's going to try it next weekend. Awesome. Well, you will have to share with us if you make something, because I really want to see it. I don't. I've only seen one person's results that did any of my pom pom tutorials, and I think that was the the wolf, and she did a fantastic job. They are so cute. Oh, more frogs. He is cool. Like. Well, there's open mouth as well. I contemplated doing an open mouth, but I chickened out because that's a whole lot more work. Um, and he's a little baby. And I think some frogs like don't keep their babies in their mouth. Or am I? Or is that alligators? Am I just making? I'm probably just making stuff up. Look at some really nice colours with the browns and the greens and the spots of all sorts of colours. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Another thing I didn't do with my frog was make his toes webbed. Easy to do, but I don't know why I didn't. And a white underside. I love seeing the underside of sculptures as well. When people put the effort in to make them right, I think that just shows like what feeling you're putting into it rather than just going, ah, nobody's going to see that. Yep, yeah, I was <laughs> I was right. It, they did keep them in their mouth. I didn't make that up. Yay, go me. My Delina, I promise you it will not look like a Frankenstein. I'm sure you'll be perfectly fine. And actually the hedgehogs turned out so so well, so easy, because it's just the mixture of the colours of wool that really make it. So you'll be perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, yeah, fun animal, animal facts with Pam. By facts, we mean possibly true. That's pretty much how I live my life. I have this ridiculous memory that remembers so much facts that people tell me, even if they're not facts. Like, 
I think when I was about 17, I went to a pub quiz and one of the questions was, what's the name of the 52nd highest mountain? And the answer was Eric. Now, why on earth would I remember that random fact? I don't even know if that's actually a true fact. I've tried to look up, but when you search for what's the 52nd highest mountain, Google doesn't come back to you with that. So I have been getting on for 30 years with that fact stuck in my brain. Now, can I remember like the equations I need for needed for my exams when I was that age? No. Not the stuff that I might have needed, but absolutely random stupid fact. <laughs> okay, I've got, I, will, I need to see some more pictures. I'm hoping that's a work in progress of an owl. Or an alien. That's interesting. Oh no, I need to see more of that. I need to know what that one is. Right, can anyone see what that is? Because we know I'm dumb. That's so going to annoy me, because it looks cool, and it looks like it's supposed to be something. <laughs> the 52nd highest mountain's called Fred. It can't be, because the post, stop, the post box just down the road is called Fred. That true story. For, um, I live actually now not far away from where my mum grew up, and... Um, at the end of her street, there's a post box, and they used to call it Fred. So when you were meeting anyone, you'd say, I'll meet you at Fred. So there you go. <laughs> so there is a post box. So it can't be the mountain. A mountain and a post box can't have the same name. That is cool, but I have no idea at all what it is. It's very cute. Is it like a sheep with a mohawk? Ow, I was right. Yes. <laughs> I don't feel so dumb now. Yes, but it, it has another side to it. Cool. See, I'm not put on the spot at all when I just randomly open the next picture and go, what on earth is that? So guys, if you're putting your shop if you're putting your pages or your shops up for review and you're wanting dummy me to have a look at them, if you put in your in your description what it actually is then I'll sound less dumb but if you're evil you probably won't do that you'll just want to listen to me spouting nonsense okay so owl sheep with mohawk panda I hope there's a panda kind of looking down they're so cute but I'm really terrible at knowing what they are I, I really like that that tickles me it's like I'm sure it's a sheep with like blue hair Oh cool, that's a nice little montage. Wow, it's like that shows up right for you guys, but I think it's a crocodile hat. That is so much fun. That would be really warm. Um, so what's, that looks like, yeah, that's a snail. Awesome, I've never done a snail before. That would be a challenge to get the sort of fluidiness of his body, but a snail eating a flower. Now I should know what that is. It's like a jackalope. Am I making that up? But yeah, it's it's a rabbit with a deer with wings and stuff. But it looks really cool. It's just because I'm dumb. I don't know what they are. Uh, ladybirds in beads. That's so cute. That must be so fiddly. I made some beadwork years ago. And I'm still finding the tiny beads that flew off. I mean, almost about four or five years ago, literally hundreds, for every bead that you get in the right place, 20 fly off and disappear into the rest of the room. I bet the dogs were pooing tiny beads for like weeks after that. A dragon, yeah, so absolutely thumbs up. Anyone who's sharing their page, make sure that they have, they have dragons on it. Dragons are always good. Hey, jackalope, I didn't make that up. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Uh, yeah, dragon. Dragons are always good. Um, a little is that like Peter Rabbit or something? I think that film was out a couple of years ago. But it's a rabbit with a backpack. That's cool. Um, 
some kind of dragonfly, I think. Those beautiful beaded wings. Road Runner, something I recognise. Something from my childhood. And another rabbit. Cool. Wily Coyote. See stuff that I know. Okay, so so do do cartoons and things that I know too. That he is fab. Um, ah, I was gonna say I'm intrigued how he's standing up, and then I see pins there, because just the his the way the cartoon is. Yes, it, it's such an unbalanced thing because drawings don't have to be able to stand up. So that must be so difficult to get him to balance, but so awesome. And I knew exactly what it was. So yay, go me. Uh, more details on him, but he is very cool. And him, oh, that is going to be so good. I don't know how she's planning to display him, but yeah, I love him running. That's great. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, he has to be chasing Roadrunner. That is going to be great. It's like, I'm hoping she's doing, well, we'll find out. We'll find out. Hopefully there's more pictures. We can go through and have a look. Oh, it just stands out. I like them running. I was hoping for some kind of like diorama, you know, some kind of landscape for them to be on, but he is fantastic. I'm giving that one a like anyway. I like them all, but I'm giving that one a like. Yay, very cool. Oh, close up of the of the dragonfly type beady thing. Fantastic photography, I have to say. That's really nice detail. A good angle. That just like really intrigues me. Yeah, they must be so fiddly. I assume it has some kind of wire through it, or if it's beaded onto wire to make it stand up, but love it. Much coolness. Yeah, I think, yeah, it looks like it's beaded together onto wire. So it's more like kind of jewelry making. Looks like an eyeball. Um, I think that's a Monsters, Monsters Inc. type eyeball-y monster. I can't remember his name. Mike Lebowski. I should know that. <laughs> that's so cool. And Runner. Absolutely perfect the motion of him. That just looks like the cartoon. That's so good. <laughs> So cute. I'm jealous. I want to make stuff like this now. And the little. We're going to call him Peter Rabbit for his Easterness. And this is right up my street, too. <laughs> Looks kind of like a crow. I'm assuming some kind of plague doctory thing, but very cool, very dark. Love it. The beak. I wish she was she was on just now because I could nosy and ask her. I'm wondering what the beak's in. That could be some of the Serafina's swax, which I haven't used yet. I'll have to get some. Um, I assume it's something like that, which really makes an interesting shell over the beak. Uh, yeah, Magdalena, the beadwork is lovely. I don't think there's many people doing beadwork sort of at that detail. <laughs> Oh, pig, that's so cool. Um, yeah, because I think that can be so delicate and so beautiful and very fiddly. <laughs> Another pig. Um, but your raw materials can be fairly cheap for that. So it's actually another kind of craft that is good to get into. More pigs, piggies. I was just going to say I want to see them all together. There we go. <laughs> oh, that makes me laugh. I don't know if it's mama pig in her piglets or just a random selection. She felt piggy that week. And excuse the constant sniffing, I'm still dying of hay fever. Most of my editing just now, as well as editing out, um, my video editing, as well as taking out the random stupid facial expressions, you don't know till you're editing yourself frame by frame the stupid faces you can pull but also like I've got two hours of me just sniffing pretty much so I'm sorry for all the ones that get through I know it's revolting I know my mum's probably sitting there shouting get a hanky but yeah hay fever hey cricket good to see you 
this so cute? Uh, this is a bum, but it looks like it might be the jackalope, which has real feathers in it. So this is exciting now. I don't know. Is the next click going to be more of the same thing, or is it going to be something random? More of the same. Yay! That's pretty cool. Yeah, so it's the rabbit with the horns and then actual real feathers. That's a great idea. It does work. Oh, Cricket. No, I appreciate seeing you anyway. Thank you so much for dropping by. I know... Sundays are not the best the best times for everyone, but I just kind of got used to, to doing them now. But appreciate seeing you anyway. Oh, and I meant to ask. I had it in my head I was going to ask Dan when he comes on. Dan, are you going live this later on today? I know Dan was talking about, and I'm not calling you Drew today. Determined not to call you Drew. Dan was talking about doing a live over this weekend. So if he is... Let us know so that people can, so we can send people over to you. Our oh, mum's also sniffing away, so that's okay. <laughs> Our cricket's sitting for a bit and have my coffee. Good for you. Priorities. I've still, I've had one coffee in the last week. I've been so good. Although this, right, dandelion and bird up probably has caffeine in it. Shall we have a look? Oh, no, no caffeine. Awesome. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've only had one caffeine in the past week. Uh, that's the close-up of the snail. Fantastic detail. That's fun. More beadwork. Fab. The little ladybirds. Very cute. They're awesome. I can't imagine how tiny they are. I need to, need to see. It. Yeah, need to see that. Well done for preempting me. So they're like thumbnail size. That must take forever. So fiddly. And the hat. Yay! I was hoping for a close up of that. Yeah, crocodile hat. <laughs> That's so fun. Completely impractical, but yeah, I, I would wear that just for daftness. And close up of his eyeball and his nose. Top of his, yep, yeah, top of his head. That's fun. <laughs> right, Dan, if you're going to keep saying you'll eat felted things, then we're going to make you eat some felted things. Or assume you mean the real snail. Again, I've never tried real snails. Um, the closest I've got is kind of whelks or winkles. Or, I don't know what... I don't know what you'd call them in the rest of the world. I don't know. But anyway, kind of see thingies in a shell that you've got to pick out of the shell with like a cocktail stick and eat them. And I've tried them once, but so I don't think I could do snails. Ah, uh, sleepy mouse. <laughs> Everyone's done sleep. Well, I know it's because Sarafina had a tutorial on sleepy mice, so everybody's done them. I've never done a sleepy mouse yet. I'll have to try it sometime. But he's cute. They're all cuddled up and holding their tails. <laughs> How does it not bite a cricket? I assume you mean the, the crocodile. I think it is biting her. It's it's eating the top of her head. Escargot. Yes, very f fancy French words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but even calling it by French names, I'm still not going to eat it. That's cute with the wings just opening up. Uh, a scarab beetle, dung beetle type thing, I think. Oh, cool, yeah, he's fairly big, but really nice. And there's the flower the snail was munching on. That's cool. I have no idea what it, it is. It looks a bit like a, a Mr. Man type character, but I think they were all one colour. Does the rest of the world have Mr. Men stories and books? Or is that just, just us? Do I sound insane again? But I'm not sure what he is, but he's a whole bunch of fun. Although with only three fingers, it's really difficult to not make him look rude how he's holding his hands. But he's cute. Oh, 
Oh wow, that's awesome. I've never seen something like that before. Kangaroo, but the the shading on the beadwork and everything's really cool and the fact it can stand up like that. That's an awesome piece of work. That must have taken forever. Dan doesn't recognise the guy either. Okay, it's cool. It's not not just me. It might just be something out of her imagination because sometimes the wool runs off and does its own thing. That's very cool. Yeah, the colours of the beads are gorgeous as well. Okay, now I have to see the rest of this because that looks like it's going to be something cool. No, no, I don't want to see the legs. I want to see the whole thing. A roo. Yep, cricket. That's very cool, roo. Come on, that's it. Yay! That's some kind of warrior type dude that I probably should know who it is. It's probably from a game or a film that I know all about. But it's very cool. I love like, the, the beaded beard and the long hair. Uh, does she sell her pieces? That is a really good question. I think so. Um, I'll ask on the Facebook group because she's not not online just now but I'll ask in the Facebook group I think she does um, uh, yeah I think so and then we'll find out but well, hang on can I open this in a different tab and find out oh yeah we've got a shop now button let's see where that takes us I've blocked pop-ups um, no come on that's not going to open it for me but anyway here's her main page and she does have a shop now button so if one of you guys can let me know if that link's working I've blocked pop-ups just now just to so I can actually look at things and yeah before I know people <laughs> people complain on streams and things yes I do have an ad blocker running I unrun it when I'm watching your videos but for doing live streams I've got the ad blocker up so we can actually watch things without ads coming on. Uh, he's very cool. <laughs> ah, the stick figure. <laughs> it's actually a great project to make stick figures. That, and they seem to have such character. It's very cute. Ooh, monkey. He's cool. He's a bit like, like the one out of The Lion King. A little bit. Probably not at all. But very cool. This looks like it's going to be a purple teddy bear. <laughs> okay, I think it's more a cat than a teddy, but that's fun. The link works. Awesome. Thank you, Magdalena. So, so there. Yes, hopefully she does sell things. <laughs> I love that. That is so much fun. It looks like a really coarse wool to have felted with, so it's going to have been tricky to felt with, but it will make a nice, really firm teddy. Teddy or cat? I'm I'm leaning towards a bit of a crazy cat. <laughs> That's hilarious. She decided to draw some viruses. So someone's got a great and imag great imagination anyway. Oh, what's this? That looks interesting. Oh, is it? I it's a stick man having a piggyback. That's the orange one's one person. I think. That's certainly intriguing. Yeah, it, they're all kind of stacking up. Little sta stick men playing around. <laughs> a wizard stick man and a cowboy stick man and a stick man. That's fun. Oh, is that? I think, yeah, that's the back of the wizard's cape. All galaxy and magical. That's very cool. I've never done... See, that's something Galaxy was a big thing on YouTube forever, and I never did a felted Galaxy. I'll have to try that. But very cool. Yes, she has a Etsy shop by the looks of the looks of the pictures there. Yeah, stuff on sale there. Magdalena, I, I agree. What a what a crazy imagination. I'm loving it. I think that's the thing that holds me back so much is I just can't I just don't have these ideas for things. 
<laughs> That's fun. Anyway, guys, I think that's that's enough looking looking at that for the second. There's just one more thing I want to share with you all. Um, I don't think anyone's in, in the stream, actually, that this will be relevant to, but I promised I would share it anyway. And it's a great opportunity. Um, just got to find this. Oh, in fact. Right, the makers, if you guys remember, um, they sent me a box to review. We go screen. They sent me a needle felting kit to review at the beginning of the year, and it's a really good kit. I would totally recommend it to anyone. Um, certainly, it's a UK based company. They do like fun regular boxes. I believe you can get like subscription boxes coming in. But they contacted me, they actually offered me a offered me if I wanted to go on this retreat but I, I personally can't but they just wanted us to have a mention for any needle filters especially in the UK but this sounds so much fun um, a needle felting retreat weekend beautiful location um, so it's like for two or three days that you're put up in that beautiful location you're fed and there's each day there's like a project to work on um, so yeah Friday night you make a gnome or a blue tip brooch did you guys see that Anneli pronounced the G there because I'm not thinking Anneli said gnome but yeah Friday night you can make a gnome or a blue tit uh, Saturday a butterfly or a picture <laughs> never surrender never retreat <laughs> um, Sunday a poseable badger or fox and make your own mixed colour bats of, of wool. So it sounds like an awesome lot of fun. A little felting holiday with other needle felters. <laughs> Send Daniel over for the retreat. Yay! That, but no. no those, those poor people trying to sensibly felt when he's, he's trying to... He's making them all laugh and they're all stabbing their fingers and stuff. Actually, that's probably another reason. I don't think I could do a retreat because I'd, I'd scare them all by my danger felting in the air because that freaks people out. Um, yeah, I don't felt properly. <laughs> but... <laughs> well, actually, Dan, she's not trying to get rid of you because that would be bringing you closer. So that's a compliment. She's like, if you're in the UK, then you would be closer. See? <laughs> I quick thinking all right anyway guys I think I think that's covered about everything I wanted to talk about if you haven't already remember and check out this Facebook page if you want to give a give her a like that we've been looking at uh, remember and remember and check out my agile canines YouTube channel. I know most of you have got it already, so thank you so much. Check out Creator Answers for from Dan Danielle from Cutting the Caboose. Uh, check out if Extreme Food Reviews. If if Dan decides to to do a to do a live stream, he's got one coming up soon. So keep an eye out for him. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you find out all that. But guys, thank you so much for hanging out. It's been great. Um, yeah, I managed a little bit longer before running out of steam today. And I will see you all next week. Thank you so much.